Hi, so this video is inspired by a couple of things I saw actually. There was a guy in Uganda who used a bucket of water to make a welding machine, and this has been copied a lot. I'm not 100% sure if he started it, but certainly it looked like the most basic form to me, uh, and it's spread and everybody's doing buckets of water welding machines, and, and they're awesome things. But um, I have a welding machine, and I saw something else by the King of Random actually, where he used a homemade welding machine to melt metal, and I thought, that would be an awesome combination. If we could use a bucket of water and the little furnace King of Random made, then we could actually melt metal with a bucket of water. And that's the aim here. So obviously the first thing that I need is a little furnace copying exactly what he did. So I got a couple of fire bricks and then I followed his instructions. I cut it in half and then I cut one and a half inches off to create four lumps. like that. So you can see I cut the fire brick in half and then I cut one and a half inches off and then I did what he did. That is I took a 50 mil hole saw and just drilled down. He used a frostner bit, I used a hole saw, drilled down and then chipped it out with a um, screwdriver and flattened the end with a chisel just by twirling it around. So that's how I made that. These are 10 millimeter holes that I drilled right the way through and then just chipped that out and this is a 10 millimeter hole I drilled at an angle to the bottom of the pit. So I made exactly what he made, in, but instead of using um, a frost bit, I used a hole saw. And then he took that and did two drill holes, 10 millimetres straight down, uh, a little bit in from the sides there to make the lid. So that goes on that like that, and that is your furnace. Now it's an arc furnace, so what you need are some of these. These are carbon rods. I have quite a lot of these carbon rods, actually, because I make batteries, obviously. King of Random reclaimed this from zinc carbon batteries, and we've done that before. It's really easy. Get your battery, pull the rod out. The rod comes impregnated with a wax. You need to burn the wax off, and you can do that just by touching them together when they're connected to the welder. King of Random used a couple of pliers. I've actually made a little holder for it, and I made that holder out of some 10 millimeter um, copper pipe. Put a cut in there, cut in there, prise it open, slide that in and a clip around it makes your holder. Now obviously this is a bare bit of metal and we don't want to be touching connectors. So what I'm going to do is slide some of this stuff over it, which is rubber vacuum tube, and then put a bit of plastic pipe over that. Let me give you a close up of this. So here's my copper pipe and you can see the saw cut going halfway down the pipe and then going down there. With some needle nose pliers, I can open that up a little bit. You don't need to open it much. There we go, and my carbon rod will fit in there. Carbon rod goes in, and then we close that over again. Then we can put our clip on. Tighten that down, put a bend in it, and that's how you get your carbon rod holder. Now obviously it's that bit I'm going to put the rubber insulation on. To have a closer look at the furnace in case you haven't seen it, there it is. So that's a um, normal fire brick I got from eBay. It's three inches there, or 75 millimeters, 75 millimeters, so that's the end of the brick. Just cut off there. This one is the next bit, so the brick was cut in half, that was cut off, that was taken out. This is a hole saw at 50 millimeters and two 10 millimeter straight the way through, and this one at a 45 degree angle, so that's how the furnace body was made. The other thing that I have is some of this stuff. This is 10 millimeter cross-sectional area, uh, twisted strand wire meant for showers and cookers. You can buy this at the electrical factors or the um, Home Depot. Obviously that just goes, when we strip it back a bit, straight into there to about however distance you want it and whack that flat. When you whack that flat it'll make a really good connection. Okay, to make these um, connection lugs actually is really quite easy. I use a little bit of this copper pipe. This is um, 10 mil uh, microbore pipe. I'm going to want about that much of the wire in there, so strip your wire back. Feed it into your pipe, 
and then whack it flat. Now you can just do that, but I quite like to put a bit of this on as some insulation. So feed that on first. Pop that in. And then push that up and on. That can be a bit stiff, so put a bit of washing up liquid on there and it'll just be fine, it'll go on. And then drill out a hole and what you end up with is that, a nice connection lug. So there is your completed furnace and you can touch this bit as much as you like. Nothing's going to happen, that's a bit of rubber and under there is a bit of plastic pipe and then we've wrapped it with red tape, so no worries there. So this bit you can't be touching and that bit when they make contact and have a high amp flow that's the bit that's going to strike the arc and get really really hot so that's the completed furnace now we need a power supply for it here is the power supply now i did think about doing this as part of the constructional video but honestly literally it is a plastic bucket with two sheets of aluminium in it held to the side either side and it, the bucket really can be any shape you like the bigger the bucket the more power basically these two bits of aluminium are firmly attached to the side here with screws through the plastic into these blocks of wood keeping the plates apart. Now you'll notice there's the lugs, they're all very beautiful. And these lugs are breaking the live. So this bit is what goes to the wall socket. So the wall socket live comes in, into one side. The other side is the bit that goes to the furnace and connects to one of those carbon rods. And you'll see the neutral here where I've connected the neutral to the wall socket directly just through two lugs there that have been bolted. So it really is that simple. You then fill this with salt water. Now the amount of salt, uh, I've seen huge variety. I, I basically put four tablespoons in here and have no idea what the guide would be. I guess if we put more in it would be more conductive. If we put less in it would be less conductive. But that is just so simple. Find yourself a plastic tub of some kind, put two plates in it. The metal can be anything, copper, aluminium, steel. I've seen steel rods being used. Uh, rebar, they cut off some rebar, drill two holes in a bit of timber and slot the rebar in. So there's just a myriad of ways you can make this. All you really want to do is um, have a bucket, some salt water and two lumps of metal of some description, aluminium, copper, steel, will work just fine. Now the power is dependent on the amount of, um, rather on the size of the plates. Here the plates are fixed, so there's going to be no variety in that power. But I have actually seen this set up as a variac as well. And if you can slide one of those plates in, so you have like a lever mecha mechanism where it will slide in and out, you can vary the voltage of this thing. So this thing is not only a sort of transformer isolation, it can also be a variac. But that's all you actually do. You set up your bucket of water. I just thought that was fantastic, really. How simple is that? Okay, so here it is all set up. Our little micro furnace, courtesy of King of Random, and our water bath welder, courtesy of some guy in Uganda. So all we have to do actually is turn this on. Now it's perfectly safe like that. There we go, it's now live. And it's perfectly safe as long as we don't bring those two bits close together. When those two bits come close together, then a massive amount of current actually flows. So you'll notice I'm wearing um, rubber gloves to protect me from that, but it also gives out a fair bit of heat. So I've got some welder's mitts, and we're going to strike an arc, and when we strike that arc, it is bright. So I have my welding mask as well. So I'm going to wear a welding mask and we're going to strike an arc with those two carbon rods. The carbon rods are battery rods, so they do have some wax in them, they might smoke a little bit, but you'll see the arc. Isn't that bright? <laughs> okay, so I thought that was an awesome bit of kit, really. Now, there's, I can think of loads of things you can do with this. Like I say, if you modified this side of it so it slid up and down, you can make your own variac. Uh, we have an arc furnace here, so there's lots of things we can do with that. 
we can melt metal with it, we can give it a go at making carbon nanotubes at home, so that's actually pretty cool. If you put a welding rod in this side and clip that onto you, um, what you want to weld, you can weld with it. So there's a whole host of things that you could do with this really simple setup that is within the capability of anybody who happens to have a, a lump of copper in a wall socket. Really, really easy. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to try and do is melt some metal. And I've got some chips of aluminium here. We'll put it into the furnace. The furnace is turned off at the moment, so we don't have to worry about that particularly. And we'll put our lumps of alley in there. And we're going to see if we can melt this aluminium. I don't really need to well, uh, wear the mask anymore because what we're doing, obviously, that bright spark is going to be in here. So we don't need to worry about it so much. But it is going to get hot, so we are going to wear, uh, obviously, our rubber gloves for the current and our heat mitts because it's going to get hot. So we'll turn that on. <coughs> Okay, that took about five minutes. I've turned it off at the wall actually because we have our little pool of molten metal here uh, and this is all nice and safe now. So we pour that out. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It's hardening up quite quickly, of course. But there is our pool of molten metal. So we're just showing that we can melt metal with the aid of water. Anyway, I hope that was of interest. Gotta get the phone. Thank you very much for watching.